What is our fourth main topic today? Our fourth main topic is from Serene. Hi, John and crew. In a recent Variety article, we were just talking about that, about the behind-the-scenes drama with Dwayne Johnson, that same article also mentioned the possibility of Ezra Miller staying on as, staying on as, given Miller has stayed out of trouble since beginning mental health treatment, some executives are amenable to continuing with the actor as the world-saving speedster, end quote. I'm glad Ezra is getting help, but given the long established pattern of their troubling behavior, continuing with them as a flash doesn't seem like a good idea. Will Warner Brothers actually keep Ezra as flash? Thanks. All right, Serene. Thanks a lot for saying that in. And, you know, it was funny. It, it was, uh, it was after we were done the John Campia show yesterday, I started getting messages from people saying, uh, John Warner Brothers is considering keeping Ezra Miller. And I dismissed the first couple that came in, but then I got more. And I thought, well, I better look into this a little bit. And sure enough, it came from that same Variety article. The, the article surrounding uh, Dwayne Johnson and everything, buried in that was a paragraph that addressed this. Now, of course, look. The Ezra Miller drama uh, has been going on for years now. And it's not just one thing, or two things, or three things, or four things, or five things. And it's not even just a matter of a couple of stupid tweets that they made. It's like actual, tangible, in some cases, horrific things that they have done over the past couple of years or allegedly did over the past couple of years that has created a real big, big, big problem that quite frankly, the previous regime of Warner Brothers should have dealt with. When we got to the point now with the new regime of Warner Brothers, at this point, there's really nothing that can be done other than get their movie out as quickly as they can and hopefully it'll do well and and bring the, this movie that Andy Muschietti has spent years putting together and try to give it as much success as you can. Well, this article comes out uh, with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, of course, and it, the details start coming out that are a little bit more... Uh, there's a spicy line in it, and that is this. This comes to us from Variety. This is in that same article with Dwayne Johnson where this little tidbit is thrown in there. As for what else Gunn and Peter Safran have planned for DC's futures, sources describe it as a broad but not blanket reset. At this point, nothing is ruled out. Given that Miller has stayed out of trouble since uh, beginning mental health treatment in the summer, some executives at Warner Brothers are amenable to continuing with the actor as the world-saving speedster after The Flash comes out in theaters on June 16th. There are some executives... Remember, this is not coming from Gus's gas station movie reviews dot fart. This is coming to us from Variety, who do have personal relationships with all the executives at all the studios, and saying some of the executives of Warner Brothers are open to the idea of Ezra retaining their role as the Flash after Andy Muschietti's Flash movie comes out. All right. I want to look at this from two points of view, okay? And I'm going to start with the point of view about why I don't think this is anything to worry about. And then I'll get onto the point of view about why I might be worried. On the point of view about why it's not something to be worried about, anybody and their three-legged dog knows that you cannot bring back Ezra Miller. You can't bring back Ezra Miller. You are dumb as fuck if you even think for a second about bringing back Ezra Miller. How stupid do you need to be? What kind of morons does David Zaslav have working for him that would even think for a second that you can bring back Ezra Miller? This is one of the most butt fuck stupid things I have ever heard. You cannot do that. And the fact that there are a couple, of, to me, that's a fireable offense. The fact that you're so stupid and you work at this company, you're gone. Anyway, now I'm not somebody who does not believe in second chances. Absolutely, I do. But I also believe in accountability. And I believe that I love the fact that Ezra Miller put themselves into therapy. I love the fact that Ezra Miller is getting the help that they need. I love all that. And I even hope, hope that after accountability and, you know, consequences are faced for their actions, that once all that is dealt with 
accepted, administered, and all that kind of stuff, that's somewhere down the line, there is a redemption arc for Ezra Miller, and Ezra Miller's able to re resume their career at some point and move on and move forward, and I hope for all that. I hope for really good things. I really do. But accountability dictates that you have disqualified yourself at this point from playing this character. Like, the movie was already shot. I mean, nothing you can do with that. The movie was made. The money was spent. It is what it is. The movie's got to come out. But that's that. The reason I'm not worried about it is because, and, and we touched on this on the um, on our uh, play and chat yesterday. It's one thing if some executives at Warner Brothers are open to the idea of Ezra Miller coming back. That's fine. They don't matter. There are only two people whose opinions matter. That's James Gunn and Peter Saffron. Because unlike Kevin Feige at Marvel, who has several layers of management between him and Bob Iger, which I think Bob Iger is going to be getting rid of those middle management layers pretty quick. But James, or James Gunn only answers to one person, and that is David Zaslav. That's it. And David Zaslav gives a lot of autonomy to his generals. The people who run the various studios, he gives them a lot of autonomy. So it doesn't matter if there's a couple of ignorant, stupid, moronic executives of Warner Brothers running around going, you know what, maybe we can still have Ezra. Maybe we, it doesn't matter. All that matters is what does James Gunn want to do? What does Peter Safran want to do? That's all that matters. Nobody has any authority. Nobody can tell James Gunn and Peter Safran what to do other than David Zaslav. And David Zaslav, don't do that. Unless it's something that affects the company as a whole, which something like this maybe could, I suppose you could make an argument for. So uh, I, it doesn't matter that a couple of Warner Brothers executives would be open to the idea of him coming back. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's like saying, well, you know, I heard Ray is open to the idea of, uh, Ray, what are you I, open to? I, I don't know, what, 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 what's the Seeing dumbest Andy thing that we tonight. could possibly do here? That Ray is open to the idea of us <laughs> investing heavily into Cineworld. Well, that's great that Ray thinks that, but here I'm the one who makes that decision. Have we checked its market cap today? Yeah, yeah not yet, but maybe we should. <laughs> you know, so that's all okay, and that's fine. Now, let's go to the part to be worried about. And the part to be worried about is this. If, and look, James Gunn has already shown the fact that he is a long-term, big-picture thinker, all that kind of stuff. He's making leadership moves that are bold, decisive, and, and show a view of the long term, not the short term. There is no way James Gunn does this. I, ha I have a thousand percent confidence. That there's no way James Gunn would be this short-sighted and do something this dumb. But I will tell you this. As a fan, as a fan, were they to keep Ezra Miller on his Flash following this movie, The Flash? I'm done. I'm done with DC. Um, if they're going to be that tone deaf, if they're going to be that blind, if they're going to be that ignorant, and this this is not me, by the way, unless you make Superman fight this guy, I don't want, no, no, this isn't about what they do creatively. I'm not talking about what they do creatively in their universe and stuff like that. Do what you want to do, and, and hopefully we love it. I'm talking, there's a bigger picture here than just what they do in the movies. Um, it, it, would, it would be such a bad precedent that, at the very minimum, I would be done with watching any movie they would put Ezra Miller in and maybe done with DC as a whole. But again, James Gunn is way too smart for this. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. Guys, you know, me and my wife, Anne, are both working professionals, and so sometimes coordinating dinner time can be a real pain. But with HelloFresh, it makes dinner time fun, easy, and nutritious. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip those trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Now, guys, we've all got New Year's resolutions and New Year's goals, and HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door. With HelloFresh, you get fast and fresh recipes. HelloFresh's latest line of meals featuring robust flavors and filling portions are ready in less than 15 minutes. Enjoy taste and quality done quick with recipes like falafel power bowls, seared steak and potatoes with Bernays sauce, or Southwest pork and bean burritos. So guys, Guys, go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia21 and use the promo code 
Campia 21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Campia 21 and use the promo code Campia 21. Rob, you know, I brought this up with you. I'm the one who came to you yesterday. I said, did you see this? <laughs> I don't know. what. What's your thoughts on all this? Well, look, uh, I have heard that even during the production of The Flash, that Ezra Miller was not exactly the easiest yeah, we person heard stuff about that, to yeah. work with. Um, and they are not as responsible necessarily as they should be when it comes to being on set. And that leads me to believe that this is going to be a one and done movie as good as it possibly could be. I'm, I'm hoping it's great because it's, hey, it's on both of our most anticipated. Yeah. I mean, year. if, if I, and I, I'm really anticipating it and I'm hoping it's a great movie. And for me, it doesn't matter if there's not going to be a, a further a furthering of the Flash universe or the DC universe in this iteration because a great movie is a great movie. If we get a great Flash movie, look, I love The Rocketeer, but there was only one of those, you know, and uh, I, I've never thought, like, I'm not going to watch this movie if I know that the universe isn't going to be extended. Uh, I would think that the mandate that Peter Safran and, and James Gunn, by the way, they, they, they said that their plan was a three-year plan. You know, like these articles now. That it was in I, stages. They got yeah, their, they they got got their got, next three yeah, years the stages, perfectly mapped which, out. Yeah, right. which is good. But I just think that, that yes, Ezra Miller will not be coming back. They will not be coming back to the DC universe. I just don't think so. Why would you keep them and not anyone else? It doesn't make sense to me. I just hope the movie's good. I, I'm glad he's getting the help he needs, and hopefully that they will make sure that this movie... and. They're playing two parts. They're, yeah. They're playing two different flashes. At minimum. Minimum. Minim two. Yeah. There could be more. They're they're gonna they're gonna bring the noise. They're gonna make it so I love their performance. I'll I'll I'll, I'll admit it. I love <clears throat> Ezra Miller as the Flash. So do I. Love them. I love them. I love them. Uh, I, even in the CW crossover. It was a little, oh, that was a was that was fun. a fun scene. I love them. I, I I, I, I've loved them since uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower, you know? By the way, the one thing I do want to point out, because I've been But seeing, they're not coming back. Yeah, they're not coming back. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out is, and uh, I gotta, you got to put a stop to this, guys, because I've seen some people in the live chat doing this as well. Um, well, how could you keep Ezra, not Henry Cavill? Guys, guys, the two situations have nothing to do with it. Nobody fired Henry Cavill. Right. This is this was a situation of DC decided they didn't want this iteration of Superman anymore because they wanted a new iteration of Superman. Had nothing to do with the actor, had nothing to do with the person. So whether they keep or ditch Ezra Miller because of all of the behavior of Ezra Miller, that has nothing to do with Henry Cavill. Please stop that nonsense. This whole, how can you not keep Henry Cavill if you're going to... The two situations are completely divorced from each other. They have no similarities whatsoever. One has nothing to do with the other. It's not like they got rid of Henry Cavill because of behavioral problems of Henry Cavill. No, it's a completely different set of circumstances, so stop that. Try, stop trying to equate those two things. It's different stuff. Anyway, Aaron, uh, we go over to you. You've been You've been around. Over the years, if we've talked about a bunch of the drama surrounding Ezra Miller at this yes, point. Yes, I have been at the, the well, I was at the big table then. You're at the, well, you're at the big <laughs> table. Then, but, you know, you Variety, again. again, it's not it's not some little, you know, jerksquad.com website. It's Variety saying that some executives and Warner Brothers saying they're open to it. I don't know. What do you think about what's in the story and what do you ultimately think is going to happen? I mean, it really goes back to what you said, which is winning cures everything. And I think that um, because there has been so much speculation about what's going to happen with Ezra Miller, you know, is Ezra still going to be in the flash or are they going to try to, uh, you know, obviously they can't reshoot it, but are they going to try to uh, deep fake him, you know, them with another actor? You know, what are they going to do? What's the studio going to do? And now we have seen, it was very clear at CinemaCon when they did not say anything about Ezra Miller. They were just like, and we have the Flash coming out, and then next up we have this, and just skated right on by it. You know, the studio is just going to hope that the movie comes out and that the character speaks for itself and that people don't have, don't, 
bring all of this up and that Ezra Miller, you know, the idea that Ezra Miller um, put themselves into rehab is a laugh. Like, that's a joke. Come on. Really? Like Ezra Miller went, you know what? I think I'm done with uh, breaking into people's homes and uh, (laughs) smacking women and robbing people and being an overall uh, complete like just grooming underage girls was fun, but I'm kind of over it. Right. Like, I don't think that Ezra Miller came to the conclusion that it was time to go get some help. I'm pretty sure the studio was like, okay, so um, we're done with this. You're going to go get some help and you're going to get your shit together because we have a movie to promote. And so that's what you're going to do now. And um, this was clearly something that was put together by the studio a la 1940s studio system. Um, Also, you know, I had I had an acting teacher once who used to always say, you don't ever want to fall under the heading of life's too short. And she said. There's a lot of talent out there. I don't care if I don't care how talented you are. We have all seen some of the greatest stars, incredibly talented people fall off their pedestal. So for people saying, but Ezra is such a good actor. You know what? I'm in acting class every week with brilliant actors who are not as famous as Ezra Miller. But guess what? They're not getting their shot because we're giving Ezra Miller shot after shot after shot after shot. There are certain cancelable offenses in Hollywood. Okay, you don't say the N word. You're canceled. You don't, you know, talk about wanting to eat people. Army Hammer, you're canceled. Like his uh, like consistent, consistent bad behavior over and over and over again, getting arrested, having numerous calls like being these are not allegations anymore. Like this is real stuff. And I just wonder how many how many chances are we going to give somebody? And the reason why I think that certain executives, certain unnamed executives are saying we're keeping that door open is because there is a chance that this movie is going to make a lot of money. And if it does, he's going to be back. He no, is. He is. I, I think, I think they, they make a billion dollars. They still won't be back. I think it's going to hit a billion dollars and they still won't be back. And by the way, it's not going to make a billion dollars. Just to be clear. But I'm saying if it does, there will be a big conversation. How do we if this movie makes a lot of money, if this movie crosses the billion dollar threshold, it's going to be real hard to not have Ezra Miller back as the flash. It's just going to it is even then if it did make a billion dollars, they would have to sit down and say, do we realistically think it made a billion dollars because of Ezra Miller? It won't matter. It won't matter. Oh, it will. It will. That part will. Unless unless we see the movie and we do go, okay, this movie is going to be incredibly successful because of Ezra Miller, which we haven't seen the movie yet, so we don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point because I don't think uh, No Way Home made that much money because Tom Holland was in it. It made that much money because you had the other two Spider-Men showing up in it. And then, you know, the, the argu- argument can be made that it's Michael Keaton as Batman that brought all Which, those, to yeah. Aaron's point, when we were at CinemaCon and they did show us a big preview of flash it was like 80 percent michael keaton and a little bit of ezra miller in it right they were really like they were really deep however with characters like batman with characters like spider-man there is already the precedent that new actors take over that role all the time Mm -hmm. so it is going to be a big conversation because people are going to expect ezra miller to come back and play that role again i think a lot of this is just gonna we're gonna have to see how much the movie makes and we're gonna have to go from there my My biggest problem is why are we acting like this is a mental health issue? Okay, I'm on a couple of different medications for my mental health fucketry and I'm not going out there strangling people. Well, I mean, look, but but to be fair, I I don't know Ezra Miller. I don't know Ezra Miller. I have not spent significant hours with Ezra Miller. I am not a mental health therapist. I, I completely believe there are there are clearly some mental health issues. I don't believe mental health issues absolve you from accountability. Right. And absolve you from still there are still consequences to actions, and but anyway, that's a that's a that's a question that none of us here are qualified to actually give real commentary on. Anyway, Rob, oh, I thought. just want to say there the I do find it fascinating to see what what James Gunn and Peter Safran are going to do in the with the fact that there are four DC movies we're getting this year. We're getting a big DC year this year, and then we're also getting a whole new universe to supplant that. And I think we as film fans and movie pundits. And superhero fans, 
it's going to be an interesting year for all of us. And that's something to look forward to. Ooh, Neon Monkey Productions said in the chat, Elliot Page as The Flash. But we talked about that last year. We talked about it. There was a, there was I can actually, see that. That I was a trending that. thing. That was a trending thing online. All right, guys. Question is for you. You heard the comments coming out from Variety articles saying some Warner Brothers executives might be open to Ezra Miller returning. What do you think about that? Do you think that's something that would actually happen? Do you think this is something, who cares what some certain executives thinks? Do you think it's something James Gunn is actually going to go for? Anyway, whatever you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.